Have you ever wondered what's behind those garden gates? Well, let us take a look at private gardens, tucked away behind the fence and walls, far from prying eyes. Today, we will fling the gates open and take you behind the garden gates. Today, we're going behind the gates, or actually behind the door of Flora and Marina, where we'll be looking at their indoor plants. Hey, Hi, Marina. Hi, Hi, Flora. How are you guys? How you doing, <laughs> So good to see you. So good to see you, guys. <laughs> Marina. Good to see you, Webster. Okay. Come in. So we're in the beautiful home of Flora and Marina, and we're going to be looking at some of their house plants. And from the foyer right here, we have a beautiful plant. Uh, which plant is that, uh, Flora? Uh, this one is... Um Paradise plant. That's a paradise plant. Yes, yes. Okay, it looks beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and could you show us the rest of the plants that you have? Uh, we have some of this plant. And we know that uh, house plants give us a lot of benefits. Yes, yes. Uh, the what? air, uh, therapy, just to relax and enjoy them. I mean, they're so just beautiful to look at them that's to me that relaxes me a lot and just taking care of them you know because plants give off oxygen yes sir you know and they hear that we breathe out the yes. carbon dioxide they take that through photosynthesis and then produce more oxygen yes. for us so they help to purify the hair mm -hmm. you know that also plants as um, also assist with your immunity because when the plants give off our water through transpiration, you know, that can help us in the home. We prevent like sore throats, you know, cough and colds and all that. So I know we have a very healthy home here yeah. Thank you. <laughs> for all the plants that we have. And um, some of the plants that we're looking at, Flora. Uh, this one is a ficus umbrella. Umbrella ficus? Yes, uh -huh. umbrella ficus. And she's doing good. I got her when she was very little. Uh, tiny one and now she's growing which is great and we have a peperonia um, this one is a um, let's see. all the names are so I know this is my beautiful a monster, monster at Deliciosa. Big monster. Uh -huh. yes and um, the other ones are I think I have the name somewhere in here um, philodendrons a philodendron, okay. Yeah, so is the one in the back. Yeah. And then the other ones over here, we have like a pilia. Yes, sir, you do. Right mm -hmm. there. They like this, the sun, indirect sunlight. So they like the bright light. The bright light. Uh huh, but yes. indirect sunlight. Yes. Yeah. Some of them like more water than the others and you know it depends you go like once a week you touch them and make sure they have enough plenty of water and some of them sometimes they have you have to wait until they're completely dry okay so since you mentioned that how often do you water them uh once a week once a week once a week mm -hmm. and we know that homeowners usually give the plants too much water instead of too little no you have and to <laughs> wait until they ask for it like that one right there, the zebra plant, she likes to be watered twice a week. That's the one we're looking at now? Yes. That's and that's one is called a zebra plant? Zebra plant, yes. And the zebra plant is in flower. And that have a beautiful oh, yeah. yellow flower yes, on that. It was bigger, but it's just starting to fade. So how long have you been um, gardening with indoor plants? I always liked that idea. Um, my dad in my country, he used to have a growing rice and all that. But uh, when I came to the States, you know, and then you're a teenager, you don't do it for a while. Mm -hmm. But w especially now with the pandemic, we really, that was the only thing that, you know, you can get yourself busy with. And it's something that I really truly enjoy the plants and, and taking care of them and, you know, Mm -hmm. Just seeing what makes them healthier. While sometimes I have to move them around to see, 
they might like the sun, they might not, they might prefer this shade, they might indirect sunlight. So sometimes I move them around a lot until they, you can see that that's where they want to be. Okay, so some of the plants, you kind of uh, know about the plants by yeah. how you grow them. Exactly. If they're not performing well exactly. in bright sunlight, you might move them a bit exactly. to a more yes. shaded area. And then replant them when, you know, like this one over here, we had them in bright light. Mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful fern yes i took it out from the sun and actually started growing like like crazy but she likes it she likes it right there oh that's a beautiful plant thank you real beautiful and we have some orchids yes i have some orchids too they need replanting that's one of my um things to do today maybe and uh and on the show today we're going to show you guys how to uh repot your orchids because um flor is a queen of orchids no i'm she, not <laughs> she got like lots of hands. orchids and she's actually teaching me a lot on how to care for orchids so we're going to show you guys some of her orchid collection and how we repot some orchids so the next plant we're looking at What's this? A peace lily? That's a peace lily and mm -hmm. that's a potos. And then a potos right over yes, here? Yes, right over there. Yes, sir. And behind you, I can't remember that one. This is a Chinese evergreen? I think it is. It is in that family. And then... Might be a... Or a daifin bacha? Maybe a daifin bacha or a Chinese evergreen. That's one of the things that I usually do. I, li I go to the store and I see this plant, I like it. Mm -hmm. And I might not know the name at the moment, but then afterwards I'm like, okay, I like it, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, and some of the stores, you know, the, the plants are misnamed. You know, some of them don't have the names on mm, it. Exactly. So then we have to do a lot of Google search to get this the names. This is another firm right here. Well, that's also, a beautiful I had to firm. move around to, until sh now she's doing well here, so. And then we have some prayer plant. Yes. And these are succulents. And some succulents also, yeah, right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so we've seen a lot of our flora's potted plants, her house plant that she have downstairs. We're going to go upstairs now and look at her orchid collection so walk us with us as we go upstairs sure. to look at her yeah. orchids okay so now we're looking at uh, flora's orchids and most of the orchids you have here are what the paleonopsis yes, orchids they are. Yes, they and are. otherwise called moth orchids and we know that the moth orchids are those with the thick leaves, mm -hmm. nice thick leaves, and they also have those um, elegant spray of blooms that just yes. fall over. And the flowers are beautiful and big, just like we have one there. I'm more like a rescuer than anything. So you rescue most of these orchids? Yes, I buy them when they when they are like really dying at the store, and I tell the guys that I can do something with them and just let them let me have them. Of course, I pay for them, but you know, like they put them. That everybody at the store knows um, how much sun they should get or not, and uh -huh. sometimes they just throw them out there and they put things, you know, go all crazy and start like this one's look this one was right under the sun so is this one that's how it, she got burned but now she's even growing new leaves this has been about two year and a half that i got them last year um, the year before last yeah, because uh orchids yes they're tropical plants and they like uh bright lights but they don't like to be in the direct sun yeah, exactly Completely because the sun indirect. will burn their leaves yes and orchids like good drainage because we know that orchids are pretty much epiphytes 
they grow in the top of the trees. Yes, they right? do. Yes, they do. So when we uh, plant our orchids, we have to make sure they have good drainage. And what are some of the stuff we use to plant the orchids? Uh, the bark and... Uh, like the wood bark? Yes, the wood bark. And like this one, I, I got in not too long ago. And as Which you can see... Which you could also see, use some Spanish moss. Yes, and um, she was way over water. That's why the leaf is so yellow. So I'm going to try to clean her up, cut that one out, and take take her out of there in the new pot. So you just get this one rescued? Mm -hmm. So you need to... Yeah. Revive her a bit. <laughs> she yes. was overwatered, and and she'll be fine by next year. She'll have more leaves, and you know she she'll have uh, flowers. It, all of them, the ones I have. That's how I started actually, because I feel so bad for them, and um, I think they're just beautiful. A lot of people think that because they're not flowering, they're they're dead, but that's not the case. Uh, the, the plant itself, as long as it's green and healthy. That's what the plant is all about. And they're orchids are beautiful even when they're not in flower because exactly. as you look at the leaves, they're nice and thick. Mm -hmm. And exactly. then even the roots just flowing over give it a sculptural uh, look to the plant. Yes. You know, you have yes. a nice, healthy, green, grayish uh, color of yes. the leaves, of the uh, roots. You know that those are healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, your orchids like to be placed in the south or eastern facing windows. Yes. So they can get pretty much morning sun, morning but not sun, in, always indirect. Indirect. You never, never, never put them by the window without you know um, I, some shade. Some shade, yes. Because the ones you have here, mm -hmm. these are what uh, more of a a west west facing. Uh, this is the south, I think. The south. Are we on the south side? Uh, yes, this is the south side. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get I my direction that's right. Side. That's the south side. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this yeah. is one of the best areas for orchids. Exactly. The south and or I the leave east. them there, and sometimes it can be really, really bright outside, but mm -hmm. uh, we, we put the shade. If that happens, then you just pull the shade a bit. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and they're so nice and beautiful. I mean, they, I give them water once a week and, you know, clean their leaves and whatnot. And that's how they, um, they just give you this, the flower, you know, for the love that you give them. And we know that orchids like good air circulation. Yes. So how you make sure that you have that? Well, we, my daughter was here and she had this um, humidifier. They okay. like that. And I keep my fan, keep fan on. on. Yes. We don't put the AC much until we're here at home. But mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you know, always put the... You keep the fan going so it can circulate going. the air. Exactly. Uh-huh. And then the temperature in the house, you keep that about 60 to 75 degrees yes, Fahrenheit. Yes, yes. My husband would like to do for less, but uh, <laughs> I'm always cold. <laughs> now, do you fertilize your orchids? I do. I sprayed a little, and when I replant them, I, I, you know, I try to give them, this is what I use for them. I Otherwise, it's just basically water. Okay, so I that's an America of, Grow mm -hmm. orchid? Yes. Yes. And the other thing that I did once was put um, the eggshells mm -hmm. and you grind them and that powder you put it in there too and when in by the roots not on the plant around. Just around so, it. Yeah. And yeah. that helps. And you do this once a month. No, I do that once a year. Once a year? <laughs> <laughs> but when they're flowering. But when they're flowering. And when they, they flower I just do in water. Mm -hmm. Water. And, and they're patient plants. You just have to let them be. They want to do their own thing. And just as long as you give them water when they ask for, mm -hmm. that's all you need to do with them. So when your orchids finish flowering, mm -hmm. um, how should we cut back the stems? I usually these? I usually do two nuts. About well, two nuts? I'd one, two. I will cut, cut right back up right here. Right about there. But this one is actually given another plant up here it's not uh it's not a flower it's another plant so we can that see gonna a little grow. plant coming mm -hmm. on top of the stem there which yeah. finished flowering interesting yeah and and that's going to be another orchid right there but you have to let her be until uh until sh you're ready to cut it and that's what happened with the ones behind you mm -hmm. my other plant gave two shoots that one in the little cup and the one in the water i'm trying to see how 
you know, how they work better with water. So it's an experiment right now exactly. to see if you can have it So in that the water. one was just like that little one growing on another plant, and she's doing good, and that one is doing good too. So I just keep them, you know, with water and see what happens. And I know everybody would like to know about how you prevent, like, uh, scale or mealybug, how um, you treat that. When, uh, when I'm replanting them, I get a toothbrush, mm -hmm. and you take all that dirt and everything out, and then you just brush it like like brushing your teeth. Just brush and, your teeth. And yep, and clean it up, mm -hmm. right? And discard everything that you don't need, and you know, and always looking out for those little pests. But any uh, mealy bugs and all of that, you can you always use soap and water soap with and vinegar. Soap and water, yeah. So I put a little bit of water. I mean, a little bit of vinegar and soap, and then on um, water, and then I just get them in a bucket and, mm -hmm. and you know submerge them and usually that takes away that and then that take it away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so all your orchids are looking pretty good yeah they need the, repotting they, they need, need to repot, repot. yes yeah. and we're gonna go downstairs now yeah and you're gonna show us how to repot we, we can do one yeah sure the orchids <laughs> okay so let's go repot some orchids Okay, guys, so now we're going to repot uh, some of our orchids. And um, before we do anything, we have to clean our instrument. want to make sure that we clean our instrument. With alcohol, it'll be fine every time because you don't want to carry whatever this one has in case that one has something else, you know. You don't want to carry one to the other, so you just need to make sure you clean every time you work on each one of them. Always and disinfect. I, yes. Instruments. Okay, so some of the tools we'll be working with is a plastic container. Plastic container. Make sure that it have good drainage yes, in the sir. bottom. Yes. These are orchid containers. You can find them not at the regular store, but you can order Amazon or, you know, Walmart, but on the web. Okay, well, get it online. Get it online. And most of when you buy orchids, they're in a pot like this, and then mm -hmm. they're in a fancy pot. Yes. So this is the yes. inner pot. And actually, this is even good because, you know, you, well, like I say, when you water your plants, you should get a bucket of water and, dr and put it in there and let it absorb let it sit. and sit there and get moist. And then you just take it out, put it on the side, and let it drain all so that water. Drain. You can't let them be with water for, like, days. That's not what they like. Okay. They'll die. And other stuff that we need would be our orchid mix. Yes, sir. Which is a blend pretty much of a pine mulch. Pine mulch, mulch and bark and yeah. Pine bark and mulch. And we're gonna use some of these um chicken yes. container peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah. I I I saw a show where this gentleman was using them and what they, he did this for was so that the plant can breathe <coughs> without having so much uh, uh, bark. So that's what I'm, pl I'm doing this for the so first good time. Good circulating. Exactly. Down good there air. for the roots. And then these are biodegradable. Biodegradable? Biodegradable. So then, um, you know, it's not like they're going to sit there forever. So, and then you can change them. So later on, but I want to try to see what, it's going to happen. Okay, so this is the yeah. first time I'm, this is the first time I'm using with this. With the peanuts in the bottom. Yes, can I okay. have that other bucket, please? Thank you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the old. So we're taking out the old orchid. Yeah, and I'm just going to try to get everything out. Get all the bark in there. And let her be completely empty. I can use that one later on. And see. Because and now we can look at the roots. We see you got okay. nice, healthy roots, the greenish, gray roots. Mm -hmm. And I have a toothbrush right here. Toothbrush is right here. Oh. What I do is I just put the water in my washer. And then we just wash yeah. everything off the roots. Mm -hmm. Just in case, because we're going to put a new, a new dirt. So. And we know for the orchid roots, these are all healthy roots. Because yeah. the outside, you see, they still have the sheath. The root is actually the inside, that wispy little wire. Yes. That you can see, but we don't have. All the roots are so healthy that there's no damage. So we can't even see what the real roots look like. 
Yes. So we're looking at all the healthy sheets that cover the roots there. Yes. So then we're oh, just awesome. going to make sure she's fine. Okay. And you always, when you replant, you try to get a bigger pot, mm -hmm. not the one that comes in. So, you know, they grow out so much and then you just never force them, just put them there and put the bark in. So what about the roots that were sticking up before? You try to I force put, that in or you just leave I them I just put them in, up? but the ones that are up, since you, otherwise you might break them, I just let them be. Just let them be. Let them be. Okay, so we won't force them down. Exactly. Okay. They are just going to do it. Okay. And then we got our orchid potting mix. Yes, just a little bit mm -hmm. but still make sure that they're still here for good circulation and that's just about it and just firm it in just a bit yeah it looks great because see it's going to be able to breathe and you can see the roots one. you can still see the roots exactly mm -hmm. and that's the main thing when you want to have these kind of containers because otherwise you will not know if they're turning dark too much water you know, whatever the case might be. Okay, so when it's transparent like that, you can still see your roots. Yes. So you can know the health of the plant. Exactly. Okay, that's, that's a good idea. Look, right Keep there, it in a transparent container, just like that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And then all we do now is just to water it. Water them, and like I said, plant, it's a patient plant. They're not going to bloom every month they're not going to bloom you know every other month they might bloom once a year i've heard that they can bloom two to three times a year but mm -hmm. but um, they bloom a long period of time yes they do know, like three, sometimes this one started back in um i would say february this one started blooming in february, in february. and it's still going and it's still there i mean so it's worth it it is it's worth it, it is mm -hmm. so you just wait until a little bit more water completely wet soaked it and in. then we'll just submerge it submerge and it let the water soak up yes and then you just let her be there for a little while it's gonna get wet and again once we have our plants we just need to water them you said once a week i do once a week just once a week in the winter time can go even a little longer because you know and the, right now that it's hot you they need a little bit more water, but otherwise you can go a week and a half. And mm -hmm. as long as, and, you know, you, and you can look at it and s feel it. You can know if it's Exactly, and you can thirsty. see when they're a little <laughs> stressed out or uh -huh. whatever. And so then, Just otherwise, you know, wash their... How about misting? Do you mist your plant? I know yes, some I people do. Miss their yes, orchids. I do. Mm -hmm. But maybe once a month. Maybe once a because, month. Because like usually if you Because go, you have a humidifier, so... Y yes, and the other thing is this thing, by putting them in the water and let them soak in all the water, mm -hmm. you know, the bark is gonna hold on to it. Right. So you really don't need, when you start watering your plants is when you're gonna have every kind of problem from the roots <laughs> dying uh -huh. to having, you know, 
Like root this rot. one over here, exactly. Yeah, the leaves start decaying, Turning and discolored, getting that yellow color mm -hmm. and all that and get soggy. They're not a, as firm them, as exactly. when they're nice and green. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the biggest problems is people think, oh, it's dry, let me water it. Don't. Once a week is more than enough. Once and there's summertime, you can do maybe a little more, depending, but otherwise, you know. You, re you really don't need to. Okay, so let's not overwater our orchids. No. Better give them too little water than too much. And let them sit. Okay, that's good advice right there. Good mm -hmm. advice. Okay, guys, so there we look at um, Miss Flora's indoor plants. We look at our orchids. And of course, we see how to take care of our orchid and how to repot them. Okay. And now we're going to go outside and look at some of the potted plants that she has outside. Okay, and um, Flora has most of her outside plants also in pot. So it's a container garden she have going out here. And the first one we have is a banana. Banana tree. A banana tree. And this is the next one is the hydrangea. Then we, then we have hydrangea. Yes, you already finished blooming. I. This is what an Annabelle, or. I don't know which one. I think it's that uh, I, the pinky one, but it has not. Uh, it bloomed already, so I took off. All the okay, so it was the white. It was. It pink. was white. It was white. Yeah. Okay. This is a. Um, and this uh, Japanese maple, Sangokaku. Yeah, with a red bark. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wind, specimen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in the winter time, when all the leaves fall off, the bark even becomes even more red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, so yes. beautiful. I got two hydrangeas. So here. we have some hydrangea. But with the water, so much rain, it's really this year is not being the greatest for my hydrangeas. Yeah, you always get that when you get too much water and hydrangea, mm -hmm. they get that little uh, black catnip. spot on there. And there's another hydrangea, the variegated leaf one. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful one. And this is a, a sage. It's catnip, I think. Yeah, I think it's a purple it's sage. I think the name is right there. The tag is still there. Yeah, black and blue salvia. salvia. There's the black and blue oh. salvia. Mm -hmm. A dogwood, it's but dogwood? the sun has really done a number on my dogwood this time. Yeah, I'm hoping they'll. Yeah, because dogwood are understory trees. You know, they like to be under taller trees yes, to protect yes, them. So when we don't yes. have trees, I have the same with my dogwood. The sun just doing a number on them because I don't have any tall trees yet. And uh, Flora and I live in the same community, so you know when they build new communities, they cut down all the trees, and we have to start back with tiny trees. Mm, so it's gonna yes. take a while before we get in the shade. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Another Japanese maple here. This look like uh, the emperor one or blood good. OK, it's a blood good. A blood good Japanese maple. Beautiful and nice fern. Mm -hmm. That Boston fern, I yes. think. Boston fern. And we had some hibiscus. I like to put them together so they don't feel lonely. OK, so you. you group your plants together yes i like to do that because uh, if you create a microclimate yes, there yes exactly mm -hmm. yes sir so has this it is a bush or a you can make it a bush or a tree okay um, i can't remember the name of it but it's i saw it at the um, at the cemetery uh -huh. and it was gorgeous and i was looking for the longest time finally i found it one day and it has grown a lot because i got it just a, li a little piece something like that and growing but I want to make it a tree okay that's what I want to do yeah that's a beautiful shrub mm -hmm. so you can make keep it as shrub a shrub or, or you can train it to be a tree mm -hmm. and you want to make it a tree that will be beautiful and elephant ears lots of coleus mm -hmm. different color and the elephant ear Yeah. 
begonia? Yes, my begonia and your wings, I believe it is. Yeah. Beautiful begonia. Yeah. It's supposed to rain all this week coming out. Yeah. And, and the seed I'm here, frosted fire. Yes. Yeah, I got this one. Beautiful, mm -hmm. variegated. And then to have the soft pink yes. bloom right here. More begonias over here. I have more this begonias. This one is beautiful. Rainbow. Yeah. Rainbow euphorbia. Euphorbia, yes. Euphorbia. That's Rainbow exactly euphorbia. This is mm -hmm. so beautiful. And it keep the um, variegation in the leaf all year. Yes, yes. All year. And I have some uh, euchre right here. Some euchre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, your croton. Oh, yeah. Give it that tropical look. Yes. Do you keep the croton out? Or you no, take it inside. It inside. Okay, in so in the winter time you take yes. the croton in. Yes. Mm -hmm. But most of the other potted plants they stay all year. Um, I'll take. I would take this one, the euphorbia inside too, and the, that one over there. Mhm. Mm mhm. We'll see what what else. Is. That one is inside plant. It's just that I have it out because the spider plant. Yeah. For some reason, I think it was a little bit too much water that I gave her, so I'm letting her dry out here in the heat. Uh huh. I, I like them. And this one completely. And the spider plant here. Yes. And it's flowering. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Nice little tiny mm -hmm. flowers. What beautiful white. Yes. And lots of pups. You know you can get new flower from all yes. of these. Yes. Mm -hmm. Each one of them can be a new plant. That can be a new plant. Yes, sir. And then I have some wisteria. Your wisteria. I love wisteria. I just need to get me an arch so I can start. <laughs> yeah, so it can grow up. Yeah. yeah. More um, hydrangea. Hydrangeas. This is Annabelle. These are endless summer hydrangea. Yes, and this is Annabelle. This is Annabelle. Yeah. Some green. Finished flowering. They were so beautiful when they started. Yes. Nice. The sun is really Yeah, white nice. ball. Yeah. Like you say, I'm waiting on my trees to get a little taller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we're all waiting on trees mm -hmm. to grow. <laughs> Like we have some um, geranium here. Geranium, and that one is uh, uh, oh, the autumn, fern. Autumn, um, yeah. Fern, autumn, autumn fern. fern. Yes, autumn sir. fern. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My hydrangeas this year really suffer with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> this is a plumeria. This one. That's a plumeria. Yeah. Plumeria. Beautiful. She bloomed the first year that I uh -huh. got it. She's been with me for eight, nine years now. Nine years? Yes. Wow. So I, I don't know if, if this it didn't year... didn't bloom this year? It, it hasn't. No. Wow. Actually, it's been even burning, so... And this one is hibiscus, but no, not beautiful the regular hibiscus. kind. Uh -huh. It opens up beautiful every morning, and it's big, big flowers. It's beautiful hibiscus. Yeah. We have some um, this one is on the side. I remember the name of it, but it's a no it's an ear. That's a, uh -huh. But the other kind that goes up is a different name. These are my um Different hostas? Different hostas. Different type of hostas? Yes. It's a beautiful knockout rose. I need to replant it. Yeah. This is what? Coral? Coral something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Coral knockout. Here's another beautiful one. Beautiful color. Too. The hostas in bloom. So pretty. Mm -hmm. I know we don't grow aster for the bloom, but. You just can't help but admire yeah. the bloom when they do. Actually, They're I got this so one beautiful. For the, in a little, uh, two, uh, a small container, uh -huh. and I finally decided to repot, and they were so overgrown that I I was able to fill out all the buckets. Yeah, it's a ginger lily right here. Yes, and these are chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums. Mm -hmm. And these were from last year, which I'm so happy because they're. And so they came good. back yeah, from last they year. They came back from last year. Mm. My cannas. Oh, beautiful canna lily. Mm. Yellow and orange. Yes. And beautiful. the black eye Susan. Black eye Susan. Rebecca. Yes. I just changed it to a new pot, so we'll see. I'm waiting for those to 
you know, get bigger and. But I like them in container because if you put them on the ground, they'll uh -huh. just they go spread. Wild. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. they spread. I like that about them when they spread. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like I have like them in my prairie garden. Exactly, uh -huh. but on a, the, on a path that you don't want to right. mine, it's mm -hmm. fine. But when you have a to control them, you have no, to keep it in a pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're right along here. Is our azaleas. Azaleas. And at the front, we have different ones. And when that first came by, it killed my bushes. So I still don't know what I'm going to put here. This one we have to change. And the tea olive. Mm. Little bloom coming up. And tea olives are very fragrant. Yeah, a little tiny bloom. <laughs> They're insignificant, but they smell beautiful. You get the smell more than you can actually see the flower. Mm -hmm. in the morning, if you're gonna These are orthon. Orthon. Yeah. But yeah. they, uh, in that late frost that we had, it yeah. really killed my plants. And I yeah, had I did a number on most of our yeah. plants. I had calla lilies this year. White oh, calla the calla lilies? lilies. Yes. Uh -huh. They were beautiful. The, potato the sweet potato vines. vines. And some more geraniums. And that one out here, I got sedum. I always have the, this pot for sedum. And this, somebody brought it in. I don't know how, but... It's a volunteer. You didn't plant it, it just I come. I saw it in uh -huh. the Get a volunteer. Marino, my husband said, uh, he goes, I think we have weed growing in there. Yeah. I said, so no, I have Mexican seen Mexican sunflower? Leaf. I think it is. Yeah. Isn't the, isn't the uh, Black Eyed Susan family, but... Yeah. Uh, but this, somebody brought it in. It's just a I volunteer. Just, yeah. It's beautiful. beautiful. I know, I'm going to take it out and put it in another pot. And our roses and... Okay, guys. <laughs> there we went behind the garden gates of Flora and Marino, looking at her potted plants that she have on the outside, and also her indoor plants. And of course, she also taught us so much about taught us so much about orchids. It's very hot, <laughs> so I'm sweating like crazy. So that's I just the, like to. That's the southern. That's in the south. <laughs> Look, it's thundering already. <laughs> yeah, so we know we're going to get some rain. <laughs> so uh, before it rains, thank you guys for coming behind the garden gates with us as we look at some orchids from Flora and tour our potted plants. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting us and for Anytime. taking us inside your home. Okay? Anytime. So we'll. See you in the next video, guys. Keep gardening. God bless. I will take you behind another garden gates. <laughs> <laughs>